So you want to know about frequency separation. I'm going to show you what frequency separation is and how to use it using my Photoshop frequency separation actions. Welcome everyone, I'm Josh Mills and this is video one of two videos where I will cover frequency separation. In this video, I explain what it is and show you how to retouch skin texture and details using frequency separation. In video two, I will show you how to retouch your colors and tones with frequency separation using the mixer brush. I will put a link to that video up above and down below in the description of this video. So what is frequency separation? Frequency separation is where you take your image and you split it into separate layers. Layers for your high frequency or your textures and details and layers for your low frequency or your colors and tones. This allows you to work on your textures and details independent from your colors and tones and then merge it back into a single layer later for a very natural but high-end result. Okay, I'm gonna show you why being able to work on the color and texture independent of each other is a benefit to us. Previously, people would use tools like the patch tool and they would take and circle a blemish and then go and copy skin texture from another area. As you can see, it copies an identical patch of skin and tries to match the color and tone and it kind of softens and blurs the skin texture. So this does not look good. Another technique was using the spot healing brush. The spot healing brush basically would be set to content aware and they would sit here and try to spot heal the blemishes out. Photoshop would try to replicate the texture and the color tones but it was never completely realistic. So the texture is blurred and the color tones don't match. The clone stamp tool, basically you got to sample an area. So if I sampled over here to replace this blemish, you get the good texture, but it also is copying the wrong color and skin tone into that area. So if I sample here, to paint out there, you see that the color is dark where it should be light. That's why being able to copy the texture into areas without bringing the color and tones along with it is a benefit to us. So how do you use frequency separation? First, make sure and grab my Photoshop retouching actions from the link in the description below so you can follow along with your own images. You may want to also save this video to a playlist now so that you can come back to it anytime to reference it. Let's go ahead and jump into it now. With your background layer selected, let's go ahead and choose the JM Frequency Separation Full from the Actions panel and click on the Run button. You will then be prompted to choose a pixel radius for the median. So let's go ahead and zoom into 100% by pressing Control-1 on a PC or Command-1 on a Mac so we can see the details that we want to be working with. For our pixel radius, we want to choose a setting where we are removing all of the good skin texture, fine details, and any details of blemishes that we want to remove. So we're going to slide this up and watch as those details start to disappear. We do not want to go so high that we blur out the underlying color and tones into just a unrecognizable shape. So let's go ahead and take that down and find a good spot in between where we are losing all of the skin texture and fine details, but we are still retaining the shape of the underlying color and tones. So 16 looks good to me. I'll go ahead and hit OK. You will then be prompted a second time. Here, you will not make any changes. All you need to do is hit OK again. And now the action will go ahead and create our frequency separation layers for us. So now we have our frequency separation layers created for us in a frequency separation group in our layers panel. I'm going to go ahead and show you what these layers are and then show you how to work on your textures and details. So you see here that you have a group called JM Frequency Separation. This group has all of our frequency separation layers inside it. I just want to show you that you only will be working on two layers in here, both the high texture working layer and the low color working layer. I named them working layers so that you know those are the layers you will be making your changes on. The other layer that I want to draw your attention to here is just a help layer called detail boost that I added to the action. You do not need to use it, but it's there for your convenience. 
All it does is if you take and hide your underlying layers that have color on them, so you only have your texture layer visible, and then you enable this detail boost layer, it enhances the details so you can see what you are working on. Most of the time, I do not actually use this layer. It's just there as a convenience. So I'm gonna disable that and go ahead and make my underlying layers visible again. And now let's go ahead and start working on our textures and details. Okay, so first we want to make sure that we have our high texture working layer selected. Then we are going to make sure that we have our clone stamp tool selected. Let's go ahead and check the settings for that. We would like our hardness to be very low or soft. Anywhere between zero to 20% I found works great. Next, we wanna make sure that our mode is set to normal. Our opacity is set to 100%. Our flow is set to 100%. And we want to make sure that our sample is set to current layer. After we have our settings, we're ready to begin. Okay. First, we have two options in how we view our image while we're working on the texture. One is with all of the layers visible and still working on the high texture layer. The other is to hide the underlying color layers so that we are only viewing the texture. This is where that detail boost can help you out. With this view, you don't have the distraction of the underlying color while you're trying to clone into different regions of the skin texture. Neither view is right or wrong. It's more of a personal preference. For today's demonstration, I'm gonna work with the color enabled. So let's move over here to these blemishes on the cheek. For the size of our clone stamp tool, we do not want to have a large diameter cursor because we do not want to sample and move large patches of skin. What we want to do is make our cursor size about the same size as or smaller than the blemish or feature that we're trying to remove. Now I'm going to go over, press and hold the Alt key and sample skin nearby, and then come over here and just brush out that blemish. Let's move down here. I will resample nearby and brush out that blemish. Now I wanna quickly go over the different skin textures and regions of the face and why you should sample from certain areas and not others. I'm gonna quickly add a blank layer here so I can grab the paintbrush and let's zoom out here. So when I'm talking about skin texture and different regions of the face, if you look at your images, you will notice that the texture in different areas on the face is different than other areas. The problem I see with many people is they will sample from one area and stamp into another area and this creates a texture that does not belong in that part of the face. So you do not want to sample from the skin directly under the eye to replace the skin on the cheek. You don't want to sample from the bridge of the nose to replace skin on the upper lip. You don't want to sample skin from the side of the jaw to replace skin on the chin. All of these areas, the texture varies. And if you start replacing skin in one area, from texture in another area, you will start to notice these wrong textures. So be very aware of the different textures in all the different areas of the face because they can change very quickly and dramatically very near each other. Now I wanna show you another tool that I added to the actions. So let me go ahead and make a big mistake here that's obvious. Let's go ahead and grab the eyebrow and let's clone it into the bridge of the nose. So now you can see that I've cloned the wrong texture completely into this area of her face. And I want to correct it quickly. All you need to do is grab your lasso tool, go and circle that area that you made the mistake, go over and select the JMFS repair, that's frequency separation repair, and press the play or run button and you will see that it automatically corrects this for you. What it's doing is it's actually copying the underlying original texture back over your mistake. So then you just go back over, grab your clone stamp tool, and you can continue to work. Okay, back to retouching the texture on the face. Let's go ahead and go back over here to these blemishes, and let me readjust my brush size again. And I will show you that I'm going to sample right here, 
near the blemish I'm removing so that I'm grabbing similar texture. And I'm going to do that here. And I'm just going to resample each time so that I'm getting unique texture for each of these areas. Now here's another good example of difference in texture. Extreme highlights can cause a completely different texture on the same area of the face than a shadow on that area of the face. So if I go over here and sample in this really bright highlight and then go right next to it into the shadow and brush in, you can see that I've created this very misplaced texture. And it works the opposite. If I sample over here in the shadow and go over here into this bright highlight, you can see it's creating this blur. So now that we've gone over the basics, I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me for the next five to 10 minutes retouch all of the texture on her face. So let's lead into a hyperlapse and then maybe we'll do a little time travel and I'll meet you on the backside. <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm back. It's eight and a half minutes into the future, and I've gone through and retouched all of the texture on the face. Now, I want to point out a few things for you real quick. First, you can see the difference of the before and after by toggling your high texture working layer on and off. So if I turn that off, you can see the before and after. So you can see everything that I've removed on her face. Next, I want to point out that you may be seeing some irregularities like right down in here, what appears to be blotchiness. That is actually because under those blemishes, there were differences in skin tone. So those color differences actually reside on the low layer. Okay, I hope this little tutorial was very helpful for you. If it was, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment down below and tell me about it. Also, go ahead and hit that thumbs up for me if you wouldn't mind. Make sure to watch video number two to see how you continue working in frequency separation on the low color layers using the mixer brush. And if you would, go ahead and subscribe so you can be notified when I upload more tutorials like this in the future. Y'all have a great day.